Long ago and far away, a young farmer dreamed. A white stag guiding her to a special place. Every night it returned as she slumbered. The same deer, the same hidden path, the same castle under a lake. Her father knew this to be a sign, surely the work of Choda Sarvash, a miraculous deer of legend. Reluctantly, he urged his daughter to follow the calling and to never look back, for she was a young farmer no more. The next morning, the young hunter admired the sunrise. She set forth on a journey she did not yet understand. Her only guide, a vision that made her question her sanity. It would only get stranger from here. Hello everybody and welcome to this video in which we are going to talk about dungeon crawlers. It's a genre that I really enjoy. I haven't had too much of a chance to talk about it in the past on this channel, but thanks to Zen Studios, I've gotten a chance today. So Operencia is the name of this one that you're seeing on the screen in front of you, and it has just released on PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch and Steam. And, like I said, it comes from Zen Studios, a team that is better known for their pinball games. But they have dabbled with quite a few other things in the past. This is their first attempt at a dungeon crawler. And it's not bad at all. It's not the greatest example of the genre. But for people like me who are fans of the dungeon crawler and have seen it nearly die before making a return in recent years, it is good to see the smaller studios experimenting with this particular genre. So just like RPGs as a whole, we can look at the dungeon crawler as belonging to two distinct camps with both the Japanese approach and the Western approach being quite different in tone and style. The Japanese approach has been very popular in recent years. We've seen a lot of different efforts at dungeon crawlers from publishers, including the likes of Mary Skelter, Demon Gaze, Stranger of Sword City, Wizardry was once a Western uh, dungeon crawler property, but it has since become Japanese, and we've seen some efforts there. There's been a lot of Japanese dungeon crawlers. There hasn't been quite so many Western ones, but there's been a couple, and they've been quite noteworthy when they have come. Uh, there was one that was released on console just last year called Bard's Tale, the latest in a long series that was quite dormant for quite a while. Uh, it's I didn't get a chance to review it, unfortunately, because it released just as I was actually leaving for Japan last year. But I've been playing it a little bit in the moments that I've had since, and it's quite enjoyable and well worth a look. There's also the Legend of Grimrock series, which is two titles, and they really kicked off the revival of the interest in the Western dungeon crawler. And then there's this one. Uh, Operencia, which is from Zen Studios. And the Western Dungeon Crawler is a little bit different to the Japanese one. Uh, for The Western Dungeon Crawler tries to be a little bit more, I guess, uh, focused on setting and, and detail of the visuals. Whereas with the Japanese Dungeon Crawlers, they tend to be quite simple anime style visuals and the dungeons themselves tend to be relatively plain. Um, the Western Dungeon Crawlers tend to have these kind of elaborate labyrinths with complex puzzles to solve and they tend to have a more action focus as well. Not this one and not Bard's Tale, but Legend of Grimrock, for example, was actually a real-time combat system. This, this is turn-based and it is actually quite different in that it's also quite tactical and slow-paced, but it, that's unusual for the Western Dungeon Crawler. Now, that being said, I do kind of wish that Operencia had a more traditional Western-style Dungeon Crawler combat system, because while I do enjoy the setting and the puzzles and the design of this game, uh, one of the things I really like about it is the fact that you've got complete free look at all times. So even though the map is grid-based, as you can see with the mini-map in the bottom left-hand corner there, it actually feels very much like a first-person RPG, like an Elder Scrolls thing or whatever. Uh, and it's really well designed around that, and the level design is great. The puzzles are interesting, 
without being too mind bending but they're also engaging enough that you don't feel like you're kind of they've been dumbed down so that uh, the developers has just thrown puzzles in there to occupy you without actually trying to make them a puzzle this game's puzzles are definitely puzzles which is nice um, but yeah the combat system is it has problems one of the biggest problems that the combat system has is it just goes on for so long even common enemies have a lot of health and take quite a while to defeat um, it's not so much a risk to your characters because common enemies don't do too much damage and there's plenty of kind of health solutions and rest stops in the dungeons along the way but because the enemies have quite a lot of health and you don't do too much damage to them combat really can drag especially when you're deep into a dungeon and you've seen the enemies that you're fighting plenty of times before it can become quite tiring the other problem with the combat system is that the game uses uh, percentage chances chances to hit so basically every attack that you have relies on a percentage chance to hit and there's always enough of a chance that you'll miss that there is the potential that you will miss attacks um, whereas a lot of other RPGs give you a kind of guaranteed damage even if it's a small amount and then um, you know as you level up you do more damage more effectively and have more skills which can do even more damage again with this one it's a little bit more old school in the sense that like the old RPGs there was always that dice roll involved and if the dice rolls went badly for you even a weak enemy could become more than just a mild irritation and can actually you know be a risk to your party this game does that and unfortunately the random number generator and system doesn't work as well as I think it should so to explain what I mean there if you imagine that you have an attack chance to hit of 85 percent then you would expect your attacks to land most of the time but of course 85 percent means that there's a 15 percent chance that the attack will miss and 15 percent is not an insignificant chance and because you roll the dice each time you know 15 percent plus 15 percent plus 15 percent means that it is entirely possible that you will miss your attack three times in a row but perceptually when you're playing a video game if you see 85 percent you expect to hit the majority of the time so what the developers actually need to do is kind of cheat a little bit so that even when the attack percentage says 85 percent the goal is that the player feels like they are hitting 85% of the time overall rather than 85% chance to hit on an individual attack. In other words, a developer really needs to make sure that if they're quoting an 85% chance to hit, most of the time the attack is going to hit, even though there is the potential that you will miss three times in a row on that kind of attack percentage. A, develop, a good developer of an RPG would never actually let you miss three times out of three when you've got that kind of hit chance there are developers that do that cheating with the percentages really well and I always think back to Fire Emblem when I think about this because Fire Emblem has the potential to miss any attack especially if because it uses that rock paper scissors combat system with you know swords axes and lances with each one being kind of strong against one and weak against another if you've got a bad pairing the chances of missing are quite frequent but if the game suggests that you're going to hit, you've got a 75% chance to hit the opponent, over the course of a battle, you may miss one or two. But the chances of you actually missing three or four in a row, even though there is the percentage chance that you could do that technically, the, that's not going to happen in a Fire Emblem game. And I can't think of a time where I've ever been frustrated with the randomness in attacks with Fire Emblem. But with this one, with Operencia, I was frustrated within the first dungeon that there were just some battles where I couldn't hit the opponent and the percentages were not bad um, I had skills that were even boosting them a bit further but just because the luck was against me I was missing quite a few attacks and when you get to a boss like this guy when I got to this boss I actually had to fight him three times the first two times he managed to beat me quite quite handily because I simply was missing too many attacks the third time without actually doing anything differently my characters went in with the same equipment, they went in with the same level, you know, experience level and skills and all that. The third time I managed to beat him quite handily because the dice rolls went my way. Now I know that with Western 
dungeon crawlers, there is an audience for that because back in the day when you were playing the old wizardry and might and magic games, you certainly felt like um, you you were missing quite a few attacks, and that percentage was a number you really weighed up before you know uh, choosing what abilities or attacks to use. But I do think that we've moved on from that, and a game like Operencia can still be retro themed and feel like a retro game to play while still doing that fudging with the percentages to make sure that the player doesn't get frustrated, especially um, in the early part of the game where you don't have that many skills and you're kind of relying on a limited range to hit. Even without that chance of uh, missing, this guy just took so long to take down as well, and he's not that interesting of a boss that you should have to fight him three times. That's just, that's just poor design in my view. Now, with all of that out of the way, as a fan of dungeon crawlers and retro RPGs, I still stuck through this with my minor irritation with the combat system, because a lot of the other parts of it are really quite admirable. The character design is great, the monsters are great, every new dungeon that you go into has really interesting beasts to fight, and the actual dungeon de design itself was really nice and really engaging. And... It was just a fun game to explore. It also has Zen Studios' absolute mastery over visual engines. Every one of Zen Studios' games are gorgeous. This one's no different. And it really shows off the strength of the uh, visual engine that the developers were confident to give you that full 360 uh, view of the, the dungeon, whereas most dungeon crawlers restrict how much you can move the camera around because they need to be limited in terms of the, the view that you see in front of you. Anyhow, that's enough for this video. Do let me know about uh, the dungeon crawlers that you enjoy in the comments if you do enjoy the genre. Always keen to meet other fans of wizardries and whatevers. Um, please do like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these videos because I do do a fair few of them and I wouldn't want you to miss out on any uh, that you might enjoy. And if you do enjoy my stuff, please do back me on Patreon. I always ask this at the end of the video, but it actually, it really does help um, to me to be able to continue to do this stuff because that's the only financial support I get for all my stuff. I don't do advertising and so on. So thank you as always for watching. We will see you at the next video. Otherwise, enjoy Operence here if you're playing it.